Good morning, church. So good to be here with you today. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Hey, we also want to welcome anybody joining us online. We're so glad you're here, part of our church family as well. Our opening scripture today can be found in Proverbs um, chapter 13, verse 22. It says, a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. So let's stand. Let's prepare our hearts uh, to go before the Lord this morning. Father God, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for this opportunity to gather together, whether we're uh, in person or we're online right now, that we are gathering together as the body of Christ to worship you, to give you your honor and your glory. And I also pray today, God, that we would be open and sensitive to your word and to your spirit, that we would be challenged, that we'd be stirred up, we'd be motivated and encouraged to go out and uh, spread your gospel message to the ends of the earth. We thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. All right. Having some tech difficulties, so let's, let's just get...
What do you know? Nothing stands between 
Sing, O come. O come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. O come to the Blood that has reconciled us, freed us from our shame, God. Freed us from from oppression and sin, God. That your blood was the atonement we needed so that we could get near to you. And it wasn't anything that we did. It was all that you did, Lord. Giving you up your body, giving up your blood on the cross that we could stand before you and in your presence today, God. And we thank you for that. And I pray we would receive that today, Father. We would know that it's not dependent on who we are, how good we're doing, how moral we are, but that you paid for all our mistakes, all our failures, all our shortcomings with the spilling of your blood on that cross, God. And I just pray for precious name. We give you all the glory today. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for coming out today. You may now be seated. Church. Whoa, sorry guys. <laughs> if you weren't awake, you're awake now. Amen. <laughs> hey, a couple announcements. So we just want to let you guys know you're probably going to be seeing a few more cameras around just going forward um, because we've got an awesome online audience. Can you guys welcome, greet, show some love to those who are joining us online? Um, as you probably know, I know a lot of you have tuned in online over the last couple months and so we've been pre-producing a lot of that content because we wanted that to be, uh, we just didn't have the capability to really stream it at a, at a high quality. And so we've been doing some upgrades. Our, our tech team has been doing an awesome job. Um, and so now we're completely live. It's simultaneous. So online is with us once again. But now we've got different cameras and, and it's really cool. So we're trying to make that as, as great an experience for our online church family as possible. Um, so there's going to be some kinks that we're going to work out over the next couple weeks, so be patient with uh, us as we're, you know, just get used to the little cameras flying by you as you're praising or whatever. Don't even pay attention to them, okay? So, <laughs> but uh, can you thank our camera team for coming in today and kind of uh, pioneering this stuff for us because we've never really done it at this level, and so, um, so it's really awesome, really exciting. Um, so just a couple reminders. So uh, we're, we're continuing our drive-in services at least for a little bit longer. So those are on Saturday at 7 p.m. You can pull in, tune to the radio. We've been having an awesome time. Um, obviously, we have our in-person service at 9 and 11. And then um, you can still join us online as well. Uh, other announcement. Last week, we had our first like youth sort of in-person. It was in the parking lot. We weren't in the building. But I think it was an awesome time, right? Where's my youth at? Where's my pack at today? 
where's my pride at today? <laughs> so we do something every summer with the youth uh, called Tribe Wars. And uh, basically they are broken into different tribes and throughout the summer they collect points for their tribe and at the end they win something. And it's always a really awesome time. And so um, if, you, if you are a teenager or you know a teenager and you would like to bring them out, that would be awesome. We'll be meeting online this next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after that, we'll be back in the parking lot, and we're going to have a giant, crazy water war. We're trying to get, like, a bunch of super soakers and dunk tanks and, like, uh, yeah, we, we're we hoping that, that the winning tribe that day will be able to dunk the leaders of the other tribes. So we're working on that. Um, we're going to have, like, little swimming pools, all kinds of crazy stuff. So it's going to be really awesome. So uh, come out to that. We'd love to have you. That's not this coming Wednesday. We'll be back online for this following week. But then the next week after that, we will have we, the tribe wars will continue in person with our water wars. Okay. So at this time, we're going to get ready to, to do our offering. Again, we're kind of contactless still, so we're not doing it exactly like we normally do. But uh, if you want to give online... You can go to crosspointelpaso.com slash online for our online audience. That's the best option for you at this time. If you feel, feel led to give, you can go to crosspointelpaso.com slash online. Really easy. Follow the instructions there. It'll walk you through it. Um, but it, today, if you're in person with us and you want to give a physical offering, we have the offering buckets on the tables by the exits. And so you can drop it there on your way out today. Uh, that would be awesome. Uh, or you can come to our church office, and this extends to anyone online as well. You can come to our church office throughout the week and drop off your offering that way. And then I just want to say thank you to all of you for being so generous and so faithful in your giving. You know, a lot of churches, as this COVID thing happened, um, we're honestly worried <laughs> because we weren't having normal church service, right? And not only did our congregation continue to give, um, and build into our ministry, but it, we actually received more during that time than, <laughs> than normal. So you guys really stepped up above and beyond, um, and it, it's enabled us to do some things like get this new system so that we can have a better online service and things like that. And so we thank you so much for supporting our ministry. This, this couldn't happen without you guys. So, so thank you. Thank you for your support. And that said, you know, for me, my favorite scripture on giving, and it's also like probably everybody's kind of favorite scripture for just the gospel in general, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. I, that always, I have that underlined in my Bible that he gave because I always want to remind myself that that love needs to have action. There has to be action that follows love or it's not really love. Like I could say I love my wife, but wife, but if I never like spend time with her, I never go out with her, take her out, do things for her, I probably don't actually love her, right? Imagine if I was like, hey, I love you, and then I just go play Xbox all day, you know, and I never talk to her. I'm, not that I've ever done that, but um, anyway, so, so love should follow in action and in, in, in a giving. There should be giving in love, and I think God demonstrated to us the greatest form of love when he gave his son. I can't imagine giving up the life of my daughter for anybody, let alone people that wouldn't even accept that I gave it, her life for them. People that would outright reject it or mock it. Can you imagine? But that's God's love. That's his love. He just, he just gives. He gives sacrificially. He gives without thought of himself. And I think he wants the church to give that way. And I'm not just talking about financially, but I'm talking about your time, talent, and treasure. What can you give to build into the kingdom? Because the, the investment you make in the kingdom never comes back empty. God is always going to do something incredible with it. The, the time you put in today could, could bring Jesus into somebody's life. The, the dollar you're able to throw in today could be used to bring the gospel message to somebody across the world that needs Jesus. And so I believe when we give, it's not because we're expecting to get some kind of financial return. And God, God blesses us that way. But what the reason we're giving is because we know that it's building into the kingdom of God, which has so greatly blessed us. Amen? And so that's why we give. That's, that's our heart behind why we give. We, we, we want to be, like, be like Jesus, and to be like Jesus means to give. 
sacrificially, not thinking of yourself, just just um, just out of love, just pouring out any blessing you have onto others. And so that's that's the spirit we want as a church. So let's pray over our offering. And then again, don't feel bad. You can after this prayer or during this prayer, if you really I, I think you can pray and type if you want. Um, you can go to crosspointelpaso.com slash give on your phone. You can give there, or you can do the physical offering of the blood bank. So there's your reminder, but let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much once again just for your faithfulness, God, during this time, that, that you've kept our church going. You've, you've extended our reach. We've got people tuning in online from all parts of the world, Lord, and that's, that's an incredible and an amazing blessing. And, and God, I just, I just thank you for, for how amazing and how how much you've poured out your spirit on our church at this time, God. I pray that, and I, and I thank you that, that our reach as a, as a small little church here on the, on the corner of Bob Mitchell, like that you've extended our reach so much further than just the size of, or scope of our church, Lord. And we know that that's your spirit because your spirit takes tiny things and makes them mighty things, God. And we thank you for that. And so I just, uh, I just pray that whatever we can give today, God, that, that you would use it, that you would multiply it to grow and strengthen your kingdom, Lord, because it's all for you. It's not about Cross Point Church. It's about the kingdom of Christ. And that's what we want to see grow. That's what we want to see spread to the ends of the earth. We want to see your gospel message impacting and touching and healing and reconciling people onto you, Lord. And whatever role we can play in that, we're excited to do that, God. And so we thank you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome. It's so glad. I'm so glad to see you. Sorry, I'm. My brain's going like a million miles an hour right now. I'm so glad to see you all here in service with us. Those of you watching online, thanks for tuning in again. My name is Judah Webb. I'm the children's ministry director here at Cross Point Church. And the reason that I'm here is because I want to uh, kind of keep you up to date as far as what we're doing to reopen Cross Point Kids. So uh, we've been working really hard and trying to figure out the best and safest way to do this so that you, our volunteers and your kids are all safe. So um, one of the things we're going to be doing is sanitizing all the toys and chairs and everything that the kids would come in contact with before and after every service. Um, as well as practicing social distancing, we'll be setting up the chairs staggered. Um, I thought about keeping, you know, siblings together, but then you might have a kid who doesn't have a sibling and they feel alone. So I'm going to go ahead and separate everybody, kind of play the, or just kind of keep it equal. Um, so everybody will kind of be spread out in the room, um, and then we're going to do our best to make sure that they stay in that area. We won't be having nursery at first. It's a little harder to keep babies separated and apart. Um, we will have preschool and the elementary age kids starting the end of July, early August. That's kind of where we're targeting. Um, we're also still planning on doing VBS. Now, the thing with VBS this year is we're going to do it different. Um, we're going to do it in the evening, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to gear it towards families. I want families to come as a, as a whole family and come, and we're going to have things for parents, for kids of, of all ages. So it's going to be more inclusive with everybody, and it's going to be in the evenings. We're working on being able to provide dinner for everyone. So parents, you can just go home, grab your kids, or to the school, wherever they're at at that time, and then bring them here. We'll feed you guys, and at 7 o'clock, we'll start and we'll be done by 8 o'clock. It's going to be short, it's going to be sweet, but it's going to be full of the word and, and fun, of course. Um, and if you guys have any questions, um, we did our best to send out a survey to all the parents. If you did happen to get that, if you could do us a favor and fill that out and submit it back. Um, and then we sent one out to the volunteers as well. So if you did receive it, please take some time because there are some questions as how we can move forward with this. Um, in your perspective, because we want to hear your opinions, because you might think, as, as parents, you're going to think of things that we're probably not. So we would love to hear back from you. So if you could fill those out and, and submit those back to us this next week, that would be great. That way we can get this rolling. And if we can, we'll even open it uh, sooner. But in the meantime, we do have the stations in the back and the booklets for them to 
or the packets for them to get as they come in. So those of you watching who have kids and you're not coming because you have kids, we do have something for them to do in the service at the moment. Okay, uh, let's give it up for Pastor Dan. All right. Now, Pastor Dan, before we, be we begin, there's two things I'd like to say. First of all, happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there, including you, Pastor Dan. Happy Thank Father's you. Day. So even those of you watching online. Um, and the second thing, there's been something that we talked about that's really been kind of resonating with me on Thursday at our staff meet, or Monday, I'm sorry, Monday at our staff meeting, um, you were telling us about legacy, leaving yep. a legacy. Yep. So I know what I want my legacy to be. And so I'm going to invite my beautiful wife, Melody, out here to help me leave a legacy. Let's welcome her. So, Pastor Dan, right here in front of everybody, I have decided that I want my legacy to be the guy who stuffed as many marshmallows as he could on stage in his mouth. Here we go. I'm starting. Melody, will you help me keep track? Okay. All right. Two. Three. Four. Four. Five. <laughs> He's breaking his record each service this weekend. Eight. Six, seven, eight, nine. Oh. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. Ten. <laughs> Eleven. You know, Judah. I mean, that's impressive. I mean, let's give it up for Judah. That's, that's pretty impressive. But when I talked about leaving a legacy, that's not quite what I had in mind, how many marshmallows you can stuff in your mouth. But, uh, I mean, it's, and they don't even stay there very long. But, but they, anyway, good it's try. Not, that's not what we're talking no, about? No, that's not quite what we're talking about. That's not what I had in mind, what the Bible is talking about. But I want to thank you for your effort. That was impressive. And uh, we'll remember that. Thank, Thank you, you, Judith. And then Thank it works. You, All right. <laughs> I don't know. The staff around here, you need to see what I got to work with each and every day. Oh, boy. I want to talk about leaving a legacy. Are you seeking a legend to be a legend or leaving a legacy? And I'd like to turn to Psalm chapter 1. If you brought your Bibles, blessed is the one who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he meditates on his law day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water <clears throat> which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. Whatever he does, he prospers. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would teach us from this word, what it means to leave a legacy in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to ask a question to you parents and grandparents. What is the greatest gift you can give your children or your grandchildren? I mean, of all the things that you could give them, what is the greatest gift? And I believe the greatest gift is leaving a legacy. You know, Today is Father's Day, and we want to uh, shout out to all you dads that are here in church and grandfathers that are here in church or will be fathers one day to be in church here. This is awesome that you've come to the house of the Lord because, you know, we're living one of the big problems today, and we're seeing it in all the unrest and the division and the, the protests and things that are going on next year is a lack of fatherhood many times. Do you know that uh, almost half of all the children that are growing up in America today are living in fatherless or father-absent homes. They do not have a father in their home that is living with them. And a fatherless child is about five times more likely to abuse drugs and alcohol and to get into trouble. They're nine times more likely than others to drop out of school and to live in poverty the rest of their life. There are 20 times more likely to end up in prison or spend time in jail. In fact, I was listening to an interview with Denzel Washington, the famous actor this week, 
And uh, can we play that uh, right now? And this is what he says about the importance of fathers. And I think it's more important to make headway in our own house. By the time the system comes into play, the damage is done. They're not locking up seven-year-olds. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was in Chicago a couple of three, four weeks ago, and we saw these little kids on bikes with masks on the side of their head, like five or six of them. And the driver said, yeah, they're little yummies. I said, who? He said, little, little yummies. Look up. Google little yummies. Mm. Little yummy was an 11-year-old murderer. Wow. And you look at his picture, you'll see the sh head shot of him. He's like this. And he got murdered at 11 by a 14-year-old. Wow. Who's doing life now and a 16-year-old. That makes no sense. You, you blame the system? Where was his father? Yeah. It starts in the house. It starts in the home. And yeah, well, well, my father got locked up. Well, where was his father? Yeah. You know, it, that, that, the, like I, I did talk about my three closest friends, and they did, you know, 15 to 25, one did 28, this and that. I was the only one of the three that had a father in my life, even though my parents were together, but I still had a father who was a gentle man and a good example, yeah. and they didn't. We can blame the system if we want, but they didn't lock any of us up at seven. Yeah. We were all doing enough to get locked up at 13, my parents sent me in another direction. They didn't have anybody to help them, and they kept doing what they were doing. So we see the importance of fathers in the home. You know, my father was a very gentle man, a humble man, unassuming kind of an individual, and he set a great example in many ways in his loyalty and faithfulness to us as kids, to my mother. Uh, he was loyal all of his married life, and uh, to his call of God as a pastor. He was kind of an unsung hero. He never pastored a very large church, um, and he was very faithful in all that he did. But the greatest legacy that he left for me and my sisters was that he was a man of faith, and he taught me the Word of God. And I was thinking about that this morning, what kind of a price can you put on that for somebody that leaves, a parent that leaves a legacy of faith? And I wasn't born in a home of atheists or agnostics or all kinds of other things or false religions, but he left me a legacy of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he taught me the Word of God. He was very intentional about that. And that's something that I will carry with me for all eternity. And I want to thank him. He died when I was 27, and so I never really had a chance to introduce him to my wife, my kids. I never got to meet him, but he left a legacy to me. And I want to talk about legend or legacy, and I want to talk to everybody. This isn't just for dads, but it's for you moms, it's for you singles, it's for every one of you. Are you seeking to be a legend or leave a legacy? You say, what's the difference? Well, legend is built in a moment, but a legacy is built over a lifetime. You know there's 750 halls of fame, 450 who's who's lists in America. And uh, it doesn't take a great deal to get into one of those. If you hit enough home runs or throw enough footballs or do something, you can get into one of those. <clears throat> but to leave a legacy is built over a lifetime. And a legend is what people think you are. A legacy is what you really are. And listen to this. A legend is what people will say about you at your funeral. But a legacy is what your children will live with for the rest of their lives. That's why it's so important that we work on building a legacy. Now, how do you do that? Well, Psalm 1 gives us some very important guidance in doing this. Notice in verse 1 of Psalm 1. First of all, he says, beware of the danger that can destroy a legacy. And he mentions three dangers. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. That is a person that listens to wrong ideas. He said, guard your heart from mindlessly accepting the opinions, the ideas, the likes of those around you, of those that we see in the media, of those that we uh, play golf with or 
go to school with or work at our jobs with. They all have opinions. They all have ideas. And beware of just going along with the crowd, going along with what everyone is saying and doing. Here is an individual who thinks for themselves, who is an independent thinker, and they weigh what they hear, and they have a, a guard upon their heart. They don't just go along with everything. You know, there were 12 spies that Moses commissioned to go into the promised land and check it out. Ten of those spies came back and said, we'll never take that land. They're giants in that land, or at least they seem like giants to us. They're fortified cities, huge walls. How are we going to be able to take over that land, even though God has promised it to us? But there was two individuals. They were the minority. That was Caleb and Joshua. And they stood up and said, we can take that because we have God on our side. And with God, we shall do valiantly. We shall tread down enemies before us if we will trust the Lord. But they went with the majority opinion, and it took them over 40 years before they could cash in and they've got the promises that God had given them to take that land. And here is an individual that is not just going along with what everyone is saying. I don't know if you've been noticing uh, in the news, but we have now what's going on in our country, what they call the cancel culture. It's really group think. And um, it's, it's uh, canceling everything. They're tearing down statues. They're uh, banning books, censoring movies, TV shows, cartoons uh, for kids, and anything that doesn't fit into their definition of what is right and correct and politically expedient. And so you have all this stuff going on, and what's happening, at, if you don't go along with what they regard, whoever they are, as offensive or right, then you'll be uh, scared into silence, or you'll be hounded uh, into submission, or you'll even be fired from your job, which is happening around the country right now. And it's, it's madness, it's crazy, because they're saying, you think like we'll tell you to think. In a land where we are founded on freedom of speech and freedom of religion and freedom to assemble and freedom to have our own opinions. And then he goes on and says in verse 1, uh, instead he does not stand in the way of sinners, living by wrong standards, just taking the stand that others are taking and whether they're right or wrong. But this is a person who has never stopped to build their own personal convictions in their life and to, to make a commitment that they're not going to violate those personal convictions no matter what happens. You know, there's a difference between an opinion and a conviction. An opinion is something that you'll argue about. A conviction is something you'll die for. And what we need is individuals today, more than ever, to take a stand and have some personal convictions. Well, what a great day it is for us to rise up in this day of confusion and darkness and proclaim the gospel, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he loves us, that he came into the world to change our lives, and we need to rise up and speak the truth clearly and speak it in love, that there is a God and he is the answer to all our problems today. And he can change lives, he can change our nation, he can change our future, because he is in control. And he holds it all in his hands. And when we honor him and stand up and proudly proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, that's going to change things around us. And God is looking for individuals to rise up and do that. He says, I will be careful to lead a blameless life, said David. I will walk in my house with a blameless heart. I will set before my eyes no vile thing. I will have nothing to do with evil. You say, well, everyone else is doing it. Well, it doesn't matter if anyone else is doing it. What God calls you and I to do is to stand for truth and grace. Jesus is full of truth and grace. And we need to be that light in the darkness today. Did you see in the news this week... Uh, the great story about a police officer, white police officer, gone into a Cracker Barrel restaurant in Tennessee to have breakfast. And he was finishing up his breakfast, and the waitress came up and gave him a note and said, uh, this note was given me by two uh, ladies, African-American ladies, 
and it's for you. And so he opened the note, and it said in the note, Black Lives Matter, but so does yours matter too. Thank you for your service. Your meal is paid for. Now that is the kind of attitude that's going to bring us together. That's the kind of attitude that's going to change our nation. When we speak truth and speak it in love and make a difference with our lives. And then he goes on in verse 1, says, does not sit in the seat of scoffers. The Amplified says, sits down and rests and relaxes with scoffers, mockers, linking with wrong people. You know, the people that you hang out with will influence you, either good or bad. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs, he who walks with wise men grows wise, but a company of fools suffers harm, a companion of fools suffers harm. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, bad company corrupts good morals. You know, King Solomon started out well, but he married pagan worshiping wives, and they turned his heart away from the true and living God. And the end of his life is a sad story of someone who got off track. And then we read about Samson. He hung out with a pagan worshiping idol-worshiping Philistines rather than his own people. And because of that, he ended up losing the call of God in his life, losing his ministry, losing his freedom. He was put in prison and losing his life. A lot chose to live in Sodom rather than with Abraham. And because of that, he lost almost everything. Be careful of the people that you hang out with. In summary, this is a picture of an individual a man or woman who's willing to stand alone for what they believe, to stand alone with God. But you join a great company of people with Noah, Abraham, Daniel, Micaiah, Paul, and of course Jesus Christ himself who stood alone for truth and righteousness and the gospel of Christ. But remember that one person plus God's always a majority wherever you go. And then he goes on in verse 2 and says, His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He delights in that which builds a legacy. And nothing builds a legacy more than dwelling in the word of God. God blesses that person who makes his delight the word of God. And notice the word meditate. He meditates on it day and night. What does that word mean, meditate? It means simply just focused thinking. You think about it until you see how it applies to your life and so you can live it out and do it. It's not just reading your Bible so you can check off something on your to-do list. Well, I did that today. And it's not just reading it and then kind of walking away and forgetting what you even read about, but it's thinking about throughout the day. What did God say? What does that mean for me? You know, we do this all the time. We, uh, uh, we have a tendency to, to uh, meditate and uh, focus our thinking on our problems. And what that produces, that produces worry. And some of us, including myself, can worry about a lot of things. And that's what that's just meditating on our problems. Or you can meditate on the Word of God. And that produces faith, which leads to, to peace and hope and joy in your life. What do you want to meditate on? Let's learn to meditate on the Word of God, and that builds legacy. Attend to my words. Submit and commit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, healing and health to all their flesh. Psalm 119, your commands make me wiser than my enemies, and I have more insight than all my teachers. How sweet are your words to my taste. Can you say that? How sweet are your words to my taste. You know, I, I lived uh, in a farm community for a number of years in my life, and two of the most stressful times for every farmer are in the spring, that was seeding time, when you're putting in your crop, and the harvest time in the fall when you're taking off your crop. And uh, one of the challenges, I have a real good friend who's a, a farmer, and he said, you know, one of the hardest things is my old tractor is just to 
to hoe a straight row and, and get that seed in properly because it'll make it so much easier when harvest time comes. And, you know, when you're out in that field from 5.30 in the morning to sometimes 11 uh, at o'clock at night, you get so exhausted and tired, it's hard to keep a straight row. But now they've come out with what they call auto steer. It's a GPS-guided system that you can install on modern tractors that is accurate and will plow a straight line up to uh, an inch of accuracy over a field of several acres. That's pretty, pretty good. And it keeps you from getting off track, and it will make your, your, your rows completely straight, which makes it easier. You don't even have to put your hand on the steering wheel. It guides the tractor and the combine for you. You know, the Word of God is like that. It's a GPS tractor, an auto steer, that keeps us centered on following the Word of God. And that's why we need this book. We need this Word of God to keep us moving in a straight line. And then notice, he goes on in verse 3, he said, understand the power of living a legacy. And he uses this beautiful illustration of a tree. He says, like, this person is like a tree planted by streams of water. And he shows three blessings that happen when we do this. First of all, we build a strong roots. Strong roots. That's what happens when a tree is by a river of water. Those roots are nourished constantly by the flow of that river. And that tree is strong because it's got strong roots that go down deep into the soil and are constantly being nourished. And we need to nourish the foundations of our life through the truth of God's Word, and that gives us a foundation. So when hard times come and difficult challenges come in our life, we're not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and by all the issues and difficulties and challenges of life. But we stand firm like a tree planted by rivers of living water. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who finds great delight in his commands. He will never be shaken. He will have no fear of bad news because his heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. And listen to this. His children will become mighty in the land. Psalm 112. His children will become mighty in the land. And then he goes on. He will yield its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. He will not only have strong roots, he'll have good fruit will come out of their life. You know, it's uh, cherry season up in um, Cloudcroft, and I remember a couple years ago, Darlene and I went up to pick cherries, and we went in this orchard there, and all these cherry trees, it was a lot of fun picking them. They were so good. Um, but cherry season, I looked at those trees, and there's nothing beautiful about a cherry tree, and they don't have a particularly good shade or anything. It's just the, the, the purpose of a cherry tree and what makes it so valuable is because it gives sweet fruit to the people that pick it. That's its purpose, that it doesn't exist for itself, but to be a blessing to others. And that's why God has planted you where you are. God wants you to be a blessing to others. He wants you to be his ambassador to those around him, to be his light, and that you become his voice, his hands, his feet, wherever you go, and that you become a blessing. What is the fruit the Bible talks about of the believer? It's not only those fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, but it's our, our witness for Christ, our light that shines, our acts of kindness and service to those around us. It's our praise. It's our stewardship of the money, time, and talent that we use for the glory of God to make a difference in the lives of of those around them, that's what God is talking about. And then, thirdly, notice in verse 6, for the Lord watches over the ways of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And thirdly, not only have strong foundation, good fruit, but a secure future. We will have an eternal future. Secure because God is at work in our lives, and this is going to carry on for all eternity. Wow, that's what's in the balance here. That's why we need to leave a legacy. Because we're not just talking about an example of just being a good and kind person, 
but we're leaving an example so that our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and, and future generations will spend eternity in heaven. That's what's at stake. That's why it's so important for you and I to leave a legacy. Now notice something in verses 4, 5, and 6. He's setting before us a choice of two kinds of paths, two ways to live, two futures, and it is up to us. God always gives us a choice. He always gives us the opportunity to make a choice to live with him and for him or to walk away from him. And God is giving you and I a choice this morning. You know, talking about legacy, it was 25 years ago that a man named Timothy McVeigh, and some of you remember him, he drove a van into the parking lot near an American elm tree, a huge elm tree, uh, next to the uh, Farrah Federal Building. And he got out and he walked away, and about 20 minutes after he walked away, this van, which was filled with explosives, blew up, and it destroyed that federal building, killed over 400 people and injured 850 people, even little innocent babies who were in the daycare in that building that day. What was a tragedy that the whole nation was shocked about and mourned was now the destruction of those lives and that building and this senseless act of terrorism but also, they noticed that this, this tree in the middle of this parking lot, which gave this great shade, this American elm tree, was destroyed. But after several weeks, something miraculous happened. These branches that had been stripped started budding new life. And trees or leaves started coming out to brush away the, the soot of all that destruction that was there. And miraculously, this tree in the middle of this parking lot started sprouting new life. It became such an inspiration to the people of Oklahoma City and later to the nation that it was fenced in, a monument was put, and if you go there today, it's called the Survivor Tree. Do you know that people come from all over the country to see this tree? Because it's a symbol of hope that even in the midst of destruction and death, and tragedy, uh, there can be life again. And they have taken the seeds and uh, seedlings from this American elm tree and planted them all over the world. And this survivor tree has now formed a legacy that continues all over the world, a legacy of hope and survival. Let me ask you a question this morning. What kind of a legacy are you going to leave behind you? Because none of us are going to be around forever. What kind of a legacy are you going to leave to your children, your grandchildren, and to your great-grandchildren? Because God says in his word, I, the Lord your God, will show love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Now today is Father's Day. And we all have a wonderful, caring, forgiving, gracious Father in heaven who loves us. And you may say today, I don't know what kind of a legacy. I don't know if I'd have much to leave because I don't know if I've really done very much to leave behind me. But that can all change this morning. You can make a fresh commitment to Christ. And your Heavenly Father will take your life from this moment on and produce a strong foundation and produce good fruit and a secure future that you can leave to generations that will follow you by a simple commitment to say, Lord, work in and through my life. Let's bow right now. And if you have walked in here and have never really given yourself completely to Jesus to allow him to work through you, to live a legacy, then say, Lord, forgive me and begin a new work in me. Thank you that you have forgiven me when you came into the the, the world, and you gave up your only begotten son to die on the cross for me. And now, today is a day of new beginnings, a fresh start. And I pray you would cleanse me, wash me clean, and live within me, and begin a whole new work that will outlive me for many years and generations to come. 
And I thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't live to be a legend. Live to leave a legacy. Well, would you stand with me as we close? And I would like to leave you with the blessing of the Lord that God commanded that uh, the high priest Aaron leave with the people every time they came together. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen and amen.